So, um, Vince, it's great, uh, great to finally be talking with yourself. Obviously, we've spoken many, many times via Instagram voice messages, and it's uh, it's really good to to get you on here, you know, and actually get some questions done for for the audience watching now. So, thank you for doing it with us. Really, uh, really, really good. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm stoked to uh, to have this chat, fireside chat, as they call it. And um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Let's get let's get into it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Should so, we just ping questions back and forth, you know, between us? Or? I think that's best. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so, Vince, one of the questions someone um, asked us the other day on our Instagram was, "What has your experiences been through this pandemic in terms of just day-to-day -day life, really?" Yeah. So, I mean, for me personally, uh, I was furloughed, so pretty much no work right when this whole thing started back in March. Um, and I, one week before they shut down the gyms, I kind of felt uncomfortable going. So mm. I kind of stopped and then, um, transitioned into all at home workouts, which has been, um, I mean, it's something better than nothing. And, and, you know, obviously I could be in a, in a small apartment or flat and not really have space for it. But uh, luckily, I'm fortunate enough to have a little bit of some space here. Um, but yeah, everything's starting to reopen, obviously, here in the States. And um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're back in the gym the last three weeks. I pretty much was there day one. So it, it is good to be back. Definitely, definitely. I think it's kind of obviously the same as what we've, what we've been through. So the gyms actually stayed open quite a lot longer than we thought they would. Um, but myself and Craig, we, you know, we, we love our training so much. We went to the, to the very end. Yeah. Um, obviously there's all sanitizing all the surfaces around us, making sure it's all clean, like making sure people are at least distance out as much as possible. You know, it even came to a point where sort of 50% of the machines, every other, every other one was taken out of usage really. Um, but we still, we still went, we still fought through and, um, and then obviously since then, I've been lucky enough to continue working with us within a fitness um, centre. So I've been lucky enough to keep training. Craig, however, on the other hand, has done a lot of home training. <laughs> I've withered away. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> Bands and a single dumbbell and that's about it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's never easy. I'll, I'll say that. I've never done so many at-home workouts in my life. Um, it, yeah, just so boring i don't know how else to put it um but uh, yeah moving moving forward uh one of the questions i had was uh how old are you guys i guess kind of a little bit of a background on you guys a little behind the scenes yes yeah, so i'm 28 you know, i just turned 28 a couple of days ago so yeah i've joined darren on that <laughs> um and we've known each other since probably about 13 well even earlier than that really but we sort of started we was in the same uh high school uh, as each other for all those years and then we got to the age of about 18 19 maybe when we started you know talking more and actually started training at a local gym um and i think since then it just sort of it just spiraled you know into into bodybuilding training you know we, we at attended as many expos as we could we followed competitive bodybuilding back in the you know the jay and ronnie days we met a lot of them, you know, I, I even was paying for backstage passes to meet these sort of guys wherever I could. You did the same, Craig, and obviously, um, eventually it got to the point where we started the channel because we, we was taking the pre-workouts and I uh, didn't really know much about anything back back when we started. Yeah. And um, it just, yeah, like I say, it just transitioned into into Review Bros as it is today. Yeah, and we've just kind of learned the learned the process if we've gone haven't we we've researched ingredients mm. learned for experience and done sort of learned it all our all on our own mm. really mm. how about yourself yeah um so i'm 32 I'm one of the older guys uh in the mix here i know you guys just had that uh supplement round table with um sub talk radio and those guys are a little older i think uh, probably mm. a little older than i am but um yeah you know i honestly was a a twig in high school, I was a pretty small guy, uh, ran a lot of track and swimming, none of the, uh, you know, hard hitting sports. And I put on a bunch of weight actually after a, a pretty bad breakup. And, um, uh, I kind of found bodybuilding.com and, and Jim Stepani actually is kind of how my whole start kind of mm. began and getting into, mm. um, training and really just fell in love with, with the gym and, and the experience. And then obviously, you know, Right about that time was when supplements, I think, were starting to take off, uh, especially pre-workouts. And 
I mean, mm. yeah, I just remember some of those pre's being pretty insane. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, and, and so, yeah, that's kind of where it all started. And, and then, you know, we started with kind of a blog, kind of YouTube channel, and then moved into more reviews and just really trying to be more informative with, um, you know, supplements and being educational. Definitely. I think, I think between us, yourselves, between the other sort of review channels, we've definitely, um, I'd like to think we've helped a lot of people with their choices in, in and you know, obviously with the market, the way it's so saturated, there's a lot of products out there that are selling in themselves same price is perhaps these ones that are hey Aaron I'm yeah. I'm losing you guys I can't uh can't hear you very well in the crazes and um we just tried to keep going really keep that uh that experience hey Aaron are you guys there it's just a lot as well these days when these companies are very good at marketing but not but don't necessarily have a really good product and sometimes that marketing can be suffering not getting as much attention and kind of, I guess what we're trying to do is, is balance that out of it oh shit mm. yeah you guys there We'll have to do it in a two-part video. You guys there? Yeah, we think we lost you for a second there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, connection yeah. I, yeah, probably connection issue there. Um. So yeah, like, like we we're saying, we think we've we've all we've all done our little bit for the for the fitness community, and um, I guess we'll keep doing so. Against the grain. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Obviously. Um, I guess we can get into that if you guys want to. Um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of us, I feel like now coming to light, uh, a lot of review channels kind of coming. I don't even know how to phrase it, but coming at you. <laughs> coming out. <laughs> coming at you. Uh, and you know, it's, yeah, it's funny. Go ahead. We, I was just going to say, we've had our fair share of, uh, drama the last few weeks maybe even months really and i think that that stems from passion though we we really really wanted to you know it was it was our goal to make sure we we're a hundred percent honest with our reviews whether it be with anecdotal actual first person usage uh, versus perhaps these labels that that look very good but then they just don't actually come together in the gym and obviously we've um rightly or wrongly called these channels out that you know only give great reviews positive reviews paid reviews potentially even um so i do think that's where a lot of the lot of the the drama sort of stemmed from um but like i say i think that's come from passion and i definitely well it, it, i can tell you it definitely has come from passion we just want the, the audience to have a true honest you know, representation of that product. And I, I like to also think that I guess that's why our views are generally pretty good because people know that we're honest and then you see these other channels and the views perhaps aren't quite as good because despite them having, you know, gaining thousands of subs within weeks and perhaps yeah. days, people you know. are catching on to their tactics and yeah, but we always figured if we stay true to ourselves and honest, then you can't go wrong really because, you know, how can someone call you out for being honest? It's like... Exactly. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it, what's really interesting is, you know, I didn't start this channel to be to make like, obviously, this is not our full time job, right? For us. And um, we're just trying to put out our own unbiased, honest opinions. And what other people want to take that with a grain of salt or they want to take it to the bank, you know, that's up to them. Um, but I, I just, it, it's hard for me to understand, and, and that's, I think, one of the issues with social media and whatnot and influencers is that, you know, these paid reviewers or whatever sort of, however they want to phrase it, you know, um, incentives to market their company, which is basically a marketing company. We've talked about this before. 
I, I just feel like it has to be disclosed. And unfortunately, I, I, I understand that they signed these non-disclosure agreements to make sure that they don't release any of that information. But it, it just is unfortunate because it's basically like it, it's a big marketing scheme. You guys there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Sorry. Um, I was just saying, I just think that um, I like to think that people just, you know, are starting to cotton on to the to the real reviews versus perhaps the paid reviews. And we're actually not against paid reviews should they be fully disclosed. Yeah. There's a big yeah, difference. Honestly. A big, big difference. Yeah, it's it's tough, you know, and, and like, we, you know, I've heard you guys talk about it before. Like, we get it. We all get it. Like, it's it's your livelihood. It's your mm. income. Uh, mm. But at the same time, like you're pitching it to consumers that, um, this is a stellar product and you're being paid in a way to be positive about it. And it just, and like I said, they just, they can't say anything because it's a non-disclosure agreement. Mm. But part of that is like, well, what about all of us guys that are out here? You know, it's not our main hustle. We can be completely unbiased and honest. Um, and, and like, like I said, I get it. I, I understand what they're doing. Um, it, it's just hard for me to understand that like so many people follow it. I, I don't know. It, it's hard for mm. me to get it. <laughs> Passionately defend them. Mm. You think, yeah. what are you defending? Lies. <laughs> yeah. I have been said that on the other, on the other foot, I think that we've actually been very, very, very surprised with the amount of support that, you know, we've been getting. Over the, over the, the course of perhaps what's trying to say, and that is, but a fake it till you make it. It's very easy to perhaps purchase this this support or these subscribers in the background, but then there's no one truly there to actually support them. So it's a case of they're faking it till till they make it, and they they're not made it, but they're <laughs> yeah. still faking it. So <laughs> so I, you know, I don't think there's as much fallout as perhaps we thought there might be. He's saying yeah. it's basically like Mysterio in Spider-Man. It's all illusions. <laughs> <laughs> it's all illusions. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's I, I think, and obviously I've seen both sides of kind of uh, what each party, I guess, is saying. And I'm, I'm you know, again, unbiased. I really have no, 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 uh, no piece of the pie in this. But um, it, it is in interesting <laughs> to me. Yeah, no dog in the race. It, it's interesting to me that they, and, and I'll just say it, Price Plow's, it's weird that their CEO, and I, I mentioned this to you guys, like their CEO, their creator of price plot has not really come out and said anything about any of this. And like, I get it. Like you don't want to deal with whatever negative press or whatever, but Ben's really the only one that's been talking about any of this. And mm. I just find it really interesting. Like Heather has the takeover right now. I see her at the gym at gold. She seems like a pretty nice person. I've never actually met her. Um, but it's just really interesting to me that, it, it, yeah, it doesn't. Something's not adding up. Like you said, like you know, subs being bought, whatever. You know, growth. Fake it till you make it. Um, their Instagram following, I think, is where they make whatever sort of influencer money or whatever. I don't think their YouTube is really that important to them. Um, it doesn't seem like it. I feel like they'd be pushing a lot more reviews. Um, and and it, I, I think this is something that's really important that we're talking about here because it's something that a lot of people are going to see that they have 15,000 followers, right? And, and you find credibility in that. And then you pretty much are only watching certain companies' reviews and certain companies' like things. Like, where's the negative press on a product that you guys just bought and you don't like it and it doesn't <clears throat> work and you think it's garbage? I, I just wish there was a little bit more, at least if they're going to do the paid reviews, which is fine. Yeah. Use some reviews that are, you know, uh, you guys went out and bought the product or, mm. you know, they sent it to you and you guys give an honest review of it. If you think mm. it's good, good. Absolutely. And I think, again, I don't really want to pull names into it, but another, I've just got to give another example of this. Fitness Informant literally one month ago had 8,500 followers on Instagram. And if you used to look today, or I looked a couple of days ago, it was on 25,000. 
There's just no way. And I'm not, again, I'm not against that, but I think subconsciously, let's just say I was a new consumer, I'm subconsciously going to look at that following and I'm just subconsciously thinking they've got that following because they're visible, because they're literally, whereas it's not going to be, not necessarily, but I don't think it's always that is my passion and my anger comes We've grafted from stuff. We've grafted for it and we tell on its reviews, and, but, but more so because I'm worried that a consumer, a new consumer, would fall for numbers versus actual yeah. reviews. I think that's I think that's probably my my biggest passion is you know what I think a lot of people will fall for it because these guys have are gaining thousands of subscribers weekly or they're gaining thousands upon thousands of Instagram followers. I just think it it gives the illusion that they are the be all and end all of reviews and they are the you know the kings of the hill. We actually made an analogy about this the other day. It's, it's like if someone's going car shopping, they look for the one with the lowest mileage, and then that would, that would be the one that's most appealing, and they disregard all the height. It's, you know, even I mean, though it could be wound value. back. Yeah, even yeah. though there could be other elements to consider. Mm. So, but, yeah, like I said earlier, it does, does definitely stem from passion. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's what drives us all. You know, we're, we're all kind of different. You know, I watched your guys' last two uh, sub-talk radio kind of chats, um, and I, I mean, all four of you guys, five of you guys, all, we all kind of have a different spin on everything. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's kind of the, the beauty in us, I guess you can say smaller channels, um, is that we all bring something different to the table. Um, and I feel like we all kind of collaborate well together. There's not mm. really, like I said, we, we don't all of us have normal nine to five day jobs. <laughs> like we're all singing we from the same hinge sheet, really. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it's good for the consumer as well because if they're interested in one particular product they can watch our review of it they can watch your review of it they can watch no fate Offman and get a feel for it and see if we're all on the same page and we all think it's a good product mm. and then you know it's just it's better to have more information available incredible information at that as well mm. definitely Total. definitely vince we actually um we got a moving on to a slightly different topic yeah um we actually got a question what are your what's your opinion on natty versus enhanced <laughs> <laughs> uh so so this is an interesting topic and i think it's not really discussed enough which it's funny i say that because i know there's so many like natty or not you know penny ko uh Billion, uh, you know there's so many out there guys can mm. call out i personally I don't have a problem with, and I, th I think this is every fitness influencer, supplement reviewer, everyone would say the same answer because it's like the politically correct answer. And that's like, hey, if you want to take whatever, you take it. Like, I have no problem with you doing that. My issue, and I think everyone would say the same, is that when you don't necessarily disclose it and you're influencing, again, products mm. to be bought. Um, mm. Mm. And I, I think it's tricky because... I mean, you look at the Steve Cooks and, and I mean, like guys that are not bodybuilders, right, um, that just have a, a good or great physique pretty much year round. Mm. And I'm like, what what is going on here? You know, um, <laughs> and you see them just doing like triathlons and not even weight training. Nick it's Bear. Hard. Yeah. Prime example. I'm a, I'm a fan of BPN. I've bought some of their products. They're here locally in Austin, but I literally watch his videos and I'm like, this guy is running eight, nine, 10 miles a day and lifting. And he's like 20, I think he's around 28, 27, something mm -hmm. like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you're, you gotta be taking something. And, and, yeah, you know, it might be something, like you know, some TRT, um, mm -hmm. or hormones that are prescribed to him because you know, his doctor or whatever has given it to him. But mm -hmm. It's tricky. I, I don't know how you guys feel. I, I'm, I'm okay with I it, think, like I said. Mm, I think it actually links very much to our previous conversation yeah. in that it's an illusion that can sell products. Yeah, it's not going to sell if he comes out and he's like, yep, yeah, test uh, so much a week and train. And <laughs> I, think, I think as time's gone on, I think more people are aware of, mm. you know, this, this topic and um, more people are aware that, you know, what you, you can't just take – BPM flight and turn into an absolute animal bodybuilding Ronnie Coleman, mm. you know? So I think people have become more aware over the years. Um, myself and Craig, have, I think have always been along the uh, same lines as you. As long as you disclose that, then do you know what? It's fair enough to a degree. Um, as long as you try not to influence young kids and what not to do it, then right. I think, 
the, I think that that's kind of fair enough. As long as you've disclosed, it's kind of like disclosing a paid review versus not. It's you've right. you, you've got to be um, honest in the fact that you can, the, these supplements are not going to give you my Michael physique. Blank. Yeah. I, you know, I think there's a, a great example of somebody, and I, he's somewhere. I, I can't remember where he resides, but uh, Brandon Hardbody. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Fully discloses that he, he's taken steroids. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't advise anyone to do it. He's an influencer. He's obviously huge. Um, you know, like people like that. I, I I respect more in the industry. Because at the end of the day, like we follow who we follow on, I feel like on, on Instagram and YouTube because of the personalities. It's not necessarily like 100% the mm. physique, just the physique. Like the physique is what captures you and you're like, oh, I'm going to follow that person. Mm. But at the end of the day, like if I know they're being fake, you're kind of just like, this is not, it, it, that's always been the thing with YouTube that I've been taught is to just be you, be real. Yeah. And, and people will come. It's, it's like we've said, the passion that we have, people will come. They're going to follow and they're going to sub subscribe. Uh, one person that really, really springs to my mind, and you're probably thinking the same person, Rich Piana. I, w w he was amazing. Iconic, mm -hmm. yeah. He was amazing. And he, he told things as they were, and um, but he still had his own nutrition range. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't trying to rely on his body or his, you know, he wasn't lying about the stuff he did, but, you know, rest his soul. Um mm -hmm. But he, he, he gave all that information out, not not to persuade people to do it. In fact, he was the opposite. He said real food is yeah. the first thing. Mm. Um, don't do steroids, kids, all the rest of it. But he didn't sell his products pretending that they were the what they were the things that gave him the physique he, he got. Yeah, like a cherry right. on top. Yeah. Absolutely. And and so, <laughs> subsequently, I actually think all his products work pretty well yeah. for the prices as well. Yeah. So... I think he was someone who actually did care about the industry. Yeah, there's not many people like him. Great. Yeah, job. it's uh, and it's funny that you guys say that because I haven't seen it too often lately in terms of um, people or or owners of companies, supplement companies, saying like, "Hey, this is." I, I don't think anyone's ever really said it like, "Oh, my pre workouts what gives me those gains." <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of this like idea that we all get that we watch our favorite influencer and we're mm. like. We want we want to be a part of that. We want to buy that, and um, and like you said, that I think that's kind of the issue is is you don't have to say anything um, to to basically lie and market your, uh, a product. You know, like mm -hmm. it, it's it's one of those things that I, I just don't get. And I think you're buying into the brand as well, aren't you? You're not just buying this pretty label. You're buying into the brand and what they believe in, their goals and their ethics and everything like that. And you, like you said, you want to be part of their community. So it's not just the product. It's the whole aura of what they're about that draws you in and keeps you there, essentially. Mm. So I think... So, yeah, go on. Go on, okay, No, Sorry. go ahead. I was just going to say, so I think for the, for the Natty versus Enhanced, like yourself, I think that I, we don't have a problem with anyone that is Enhanced. Um, we're not ourselves, but, um, you know, it's always been considered perhaps we've just decided to stay down the, the healthy route and longevity. well, the longevity routes, and we can keep the channel going as well. And so then we're only relying on the products for what we, what we, what we've received back as such. So, yeah. but absolutely no problems with people who do. And actually part of me thinks that they should be legalized since, and there's a lot more information than doctors can help. Mm, so, control over it. Yeah. So then, um, there's a lot more information out there on them. So then people can't, don't make, you know, ridiculous decisions. You know, they're not taking seven, eight, nine compounds a day and all sorts of things. They're just, um, the information is there and the doctors can help and, you know, they can buy it. I just don't, it's not for me. It's not the same as like taking cocaine or heroin, you know, it's, mm. it is for a specific reason. It's not for just a, a five minute high, it, you know, right. I think it is, to, it's an, inf to say it's an investment might be a bit strong, but it's more of an investment than doing, you know, a line of cocaine, for example. Yeah, that's like, that's <laughs> a momentary thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, I 100% agree. I think if it was, if there was more information out there, it would help a lot of people in terms of making that decision, whether they should, they want to go down that road or not. And I, you know, I think a lot of, I don't know how your guys' viewership is like kind of age range, but I feel like a lot of viewers currently with, with supplement reviews are pretty young. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of influence here that, um, 
you know, they watch certain people. And, and like I said, I, I, I commend Brandon. It's just the one person that comes to mind for, for, you know, coming out and basically just saying like, yeah, I take steroids. I don't advise that you do. If you're going to make sure you do your own research and really research it, make sure it's something that you want to put into your body. Yeah. You've got to be hundred percent. You've got to have done research. Um, you, you should just not risk anything just because, you know, some random person on a forum said this is what they do. So, yeah. Another thing I think is a concern, particularly in the last sort of five, maybe 10 years, is Psalms and, and people downplaying how how much they can affect you and, and the sort of misinterpretation of them because they come in a shiny bottle. You can purchase them over the internet and have them delivered to your front door. They come in a pill form. They're much easier to do people almost convince themselves that it's more like just a test booster or something a bit, you know, friendly with no negative side effects. When in fact, a lot, depending on what one you take, obviously could have the same or worse side effect than a lot of steroids. So Mm -hmm. I think that's something that affects a lot of the youth as well. It's just jumping on Psalms, not really knowing what they are. Yeah, no, you, you put in things, uh, target words like fat loss, muscle Mm -hmm. building, all the standards on those bottles. Mm -hmm. I literally just saw it. (laughs) on one of one of the one of the call out channels i won't say who um literally trying to market you know like this is what i take sarm wise here's where you can get it and i'm like these these kids don't know what this stuff is i mean you, you just it's being marketed and um it's a miracle you just have to do, yeah yeah exactly exactly so take this buy it and uh this is what i take um but at the same time, I will say this. I think there needs to be, like you said, more information about SARMs, people talking about SARMs and steroids and the use and kind of negative. It's like a review. you got to show both sides, you know, the positives mm-hmm. and negatives. We negative do get asked to review them, actually, funny enough. Mm. From SARMs? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have probably a cut, at least a few requests a month, don't we? Yeah, um, we've even been sent yeah. them by quite a lot of Mm. Pre workouts, you know, we'll open package one day. The pre workout will be in there, and in, in there with it will be a, a you know, a little bottle of Psalms. <laughs> It'll be an easy, quick, you know, a big, yeah. Yeah. You guys there? Well, you know, for that. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, we're here still. Yeah, sorry, we lost you there for a second. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying. Craig was just saying it would be a difficult thing to to stop moving into those realms because it would then become hard to differentiate the, the, the results from you know, you know endurance is up. Absolutely, everything gets better or worse because of SARS. Then for how can we review these pre workouts with you know 100 percent transparency? Yeah, no, it's uh it's funny. There's a there's a supplement shop down in Los Angeles called uh, SoCal Subs, and they sell some mm. pre workout. And I've looked at it, and it's like their extreme pre workout. And then I look at the back, and there's their SARMs in the pre workout. Yeah, so, and I'm that. like, yeah. I guarantee there's 18 year old kids buying this stuff, not knowing that they're actually using products that like they have no idea. And I it's mm. just or maybe yeah, that you know is the worry, that, those ones yeah you know, those are that's the world we're living in i guess now mm. what's your opinion on um on products with dmaa and dmha in them and should they be reviewed 100 <laughs> percent uh i'm still waiting to get my hands on excelsior and giving that one a try oh, looking dude. forward to that. <laughs> funny enough that one's apparently not <laughs> Well, what's that, Craig? So, <laughs> apparently, Excelsior hasn't got DMAA or DMHA in it, according to a label. But going by the feelings, there's definitely something, there's in, something there. in there. Something yeah, something. Yeah, that's that's how I felt about uh, that TSM Prejacked. Oh there's, yeah, there's definitely something in that one. Um, I I don't mind it. It's like I I've heard you guys talk about this, and I'm on the same page. I like it's better for us to put information out there regarding these supplements that are that are pushing the boundaries or, or crossing the line. Um, I guess that's kind of the risk of our, our jobs in reviewing supplements is that you can't just do, you know, the C4s and, you know, the, the 
all the mainstream companies, like you've got to look at a bunch of these smaller ones that are all popping up. It's just crazy mm. how many supplement companies are popping up. And they're mm. putting stuff in there that, uh, again, I like TSN. That pre-jacked was great. Yeah. I don't know what all is in there. I'll be honest. But uh, I, that pre-workout, <laughs> that, that label was great. I love that. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's about being informative and educational. And I, that's what we're all trying to do and give our own experience with products. And, and I mean, you look at tech, like I grew up watching all the tech channels on YouTube. They all receive product. They tell us if it's good or bad. And that's what it is. And I just feel like us, for some reason, health and fitness supplement reviews, get the short end of the stick when it comes to the reviews. I, I just see all these other review channels when, when it comes to tech and they all get along. Uh, everyone plays nice. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with us, it's like we all, especially with supplementation, it's all going to be different. We're all, it's, we're all going to have different experiences more than likely. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, more information, you guys are not pushing DMAA products. It's not like all you do is DMAA product. Mm -hmm. Um, but someone needs to do it and talk about it because, like I said, there's going to be that kid that's at the store and, and the associate's like, yeah, man, this is like some crazy stuff. That's literally the first time I walked into a supplement store, I was given, uh, I don't know if you guys tried this, the original craze. Mm, yeah. Like See, that, yeah, stuff, that stuff yeah. hit yeah. hard. And I remember I even <laughs> gave some to my dad. And... <laughs> I mean, I won't sit here like mind blown. Like I, again, I didn't do my research. I didn't really understand what was in it, and I was mm. a young, young lad, and um, you know, not healthy for my dad to be taking at his age. Um, we have to talk about it because it's important. Yeah, and rightly or wrongly, there's actually a, a huge percentage of our followers that want to stay these sort of things like the more hardcore pre-workout so you know rightly or wrongly we're going to review them so there's information for those people yeah we'll never we'll never push for uh products to be sold mm, yeah no. or cherry pick what we what we review mm. yeah well, well, just I, I just had a cool we're kind of shift gears here from from all the uh i guess the drama questions <laughs> yeah <laughs> um <laughs> i guess did, did you guys um think you'd be where you're kind of at now when you guys started uh, two years no ago way. no way no not at all we didn't plan this at all we we were very i don't know if you've seen our early early like beginning videos they were awful mm. they were really bad <laughs> we were just off the cuff sitting exactly like we are now mm. we didn't even know anything we i don't know how we put it to a video together <laughs> we were just talking really weren't we i mean we had no sake like foundational structure to the review i don't even think like, we knew what beta alanine was when we first mm, started we couldn't <laughs> pronounce a lot of the words off, off the label <laughs> uh, i don't encourage anyone to go and try and find our old videos so i like to think we've learned a lot since then yeah uh, well i know we have um we've learned a lot about uh, hours upon hours of studying through ingredient to ingredient to ingredient so no, the answer is I didn't. I definitely didn't think we'd be where we are now. Obviously, we get sent products as soon the day the day um, we got sent our first product for free Story was Yates, amazing. Right? Yeah, and that was a good two to three months after starting the channel. We just bought our own ones and just reviewed the one scoop off the use at the you know going to the gym. Cheap ones off the shelf in home bargains. Anything we stores, could get our yeah. hands on, we was talking about it. We weren't with no science behind it. <laughs> nothing like that at all yeah even all the editing level. nothing it's just a complete straight video it felt itchy it felt good pumps yeah i don't know <laughs> if i'll do it again yeah some uh, people actually did like that more raw style <laughs> review, though. <laughs> so the answer is no not at all and I, i'm very very grateful for where we are today you know what it's um i think we've found our groove good. in terms of the structure of our reviews the layout the time you know all of those things have kind of fell into a nice sweet spot. I think of mm. keeping them 10 to 15 minutes. There was a point where we were, our reviews were lasting 25, 30 minutes. Um, and yeah, we, we've slowly condensed them down to the main uh, bits that mm. people are interested in. Mm. How about yourself? 
Well, I'm sure you guys can tell. We, we mentioned this right at the top. I mean, I started in, in video and film production uh, mm -hmm. when I was, I think, 12, 10, 10 years old, uh, mm -hmm. working with VHS tapes and, and Super 8. Um, you know, I pretty much, if you guys go way back, which I don't know if you've seen them, there's some old lip sync videos on my channel uh, that <laughs> I used to make back in like 2004, 2005. Um, and, and we used to make videos for fun. And, you know, like I said, I started watching some, some fitness influencers like Max Tuning, Christian Guzman, um, mm. and whatnot on YouTube. They're kind of some of the original guys that started on YouTube. And, and then this idea of like, let's just start vlogging. Let's just start like doing it. And yeah, mm. those videos are terrible. Absolutely horrible thumbnails. <laughs> videos are probably like 30 minutes long just overtly long and, and just like not planned out whatsoever <laughs> and then you know we started talking about supplements and i would really just been taking one company supplements for the last probably three years mm -hmm. and i wanted to change it up and I, I was like you know what i'll just start filming some reviews of it and mix it in with the was that Cage muscle yeah. yeah yeah so i was taking pre-cage since pretty much the start of their company mm -hmm. Um, and I, I liked it. I just, it wasn't, well now, I mean, I've taken so many different frees and I'm so stimmed out right now that, you <laughs> we know, still got it to review, haven't we? Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just started doing reviews. They started like, I'll be completely transparent. Like they started gaining a lot more traction because it's so educational and informative rather than blogs, which is more entertaining. Um, and I wanted to build the channel by actually trying to do something a little bit more productive. And, and I actually just brought the vlog back um, yeah. yesterday. Mm. And so um, it gives a little bit of an insight into the behind the scenes a little bit more. And then um, you can still do the reviews, you know, 90% of the time. So Yeah. That's what we want to try and do eventually is move more into our experiences, training, diet, mm. you know, you name it. More of a, a whole while still keeping the reviews obviously ticking out got a bit of a backlog to work through at the moment yeah so. <laughs> yeah sounds like you guys got a lot on the uh the, the back burner there to uh to get through um so with that you know what do you what do you guys think your your biggest goal of this year obviously there's been a lot going on in terms of the world but uh what's your current i guess biggest goal of, of 2020 for the channel or for you guys Ooh, that's a tough one. I think um, really just just make the Review Bros name more known and more credible and add more weight to it, really, and, and just be up there as one of the more recognised and reputable review channels or platforms for people to go to. I mean, that's that's probably our ultimate goal, but I think that we're kind of getting there already. Yeah, it's just, just to naturally build our subscriber base up so then we can... Uh, <laughs> so then, <laughs> no digs there, but naturally build it up so then we can get, you know, a genuine following behind us and just keep getting honest reviews done. I mean, like I say, we've got a lot to get through, a lot of companies chasing all at the same time. It's quite a difficult, difficult process to get to get your head through. Um, and yeah, just, just nat I guess, like I said, just naturally build those numbers up. So then we get the, the views up and it just naturally grows. Mm. What so, about you? Um, I mean, I, overall, I would love to, to obviously just grow continually. I mean, I've never, I know you're supposed to look at the metrics and kind of look at things and, and whatnot and like follow what people kind of ask you to, to review. I'm sure you guys, you guys get a lot more comments and requests for certain products to review. And, and I mean, you just can't, um, there's just too many. Um, but I think I'll, for, for me, I'm not necessarily in that sort of log backlog currently. I, I just really want to review stuff that I want to review. Mm. I feel like, you know, I can look at the metrics all day and like pre-workouts are probably always going to have the most views. Um, ghost products are always going to have the most views. Although mm. I do enjoy doing ghost products. Um, mm. yeah, but you know, I, I just kind of want to grow naturally this year. Natty all natty <laughs> and uh you know continue to grow i mean my career is, is offside off camera is is in a good place so like i just really enjoy doing the experience of trying new products and, and sharing that with people so i think like you guys i would love to be um I, actually you know what the biggest goal is to get my instagram get some followers maybe i'll just go out and buy some i don't know <laughs> Everyone so else seems to. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, like said, though, if we keep being honest, then the, uh, I think the, yeah. the the numbers will will just keep going up. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Obviously, um, the second we was to do a paid review, then those numbers would drop. So we'll keep yeah. honest. I think we'd be called out on it anyway. Like I think people who follow us are clued up enough to be. They'd know something's wrong if we was pushing a crap product and saying, "Get this now! It's amazing." They'd be like, "Whoa, hang on." Mm. So mm. I guess I'll ask this question because this is very common in YouTube and I don't know if a lot of people know, obviously I have a lot of experience like watching it happen. I've never had it happen to me, but if a company like, um, and you guys have probably heard it maybe like a company like HelloFresh, like a, a, a meal prep company, right? They send you meals and you basically have to say, they set, they basically contact you guys and they're like, Hey, we'll pay you guys X amount of dollars. Can you guys just say like the video is sponsored by them kind of do a little bit of product placement. Would you guys ever consider doing something like that, where it's not a supplement? Yeah, but, today, but, but I think if, like Aaron said, if, if you're honest with it from the start and say, "Yeah, this is a sponsored review or an advert," and just get it out of the way right off the bat, then I, don't, I think there's no problem with it. Would we do it personally? It's not really the route we're going down with our channel because then it, it's not really a review. It's more of like you said, product placement or advertising. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not really our niche. Oh uh, yeah, I, I'd say I don't really want to be parred up with those people who do do that sort of thing simply because as soon as you do that once mm. then your whole channel is is going to be under mm. scrutiny yeah so uh, no i think i think obviously we'd love to make a bit of money from it but i think the the most important thing we'd have to tell for example say hello fresh we get yeah well, you can pay us to, to put that on our reviews and that's that counts as our editing money but we're not going to lie about the product we're mm. going to be a hundred percent honest yeah yeah yeah, I, and I mean, that's, I mean, I see it all over. And I don't know if you guys watch a bunch of other like non fitness YouTube stuff. I mean, I feel like once you're in YouTube, you kind of start watching a lot more YouTube, uh, a lot of different <laughs> genres. But, you know, I see it all the time, like Squarespace, website design, you know, that ad pops up all the time on, on a lot of influencers channels like hey man this video is sponsored by squarespace like, yes no, i built yeah, my website yeah. like this blah 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 and then you know they get into the video yeah it's like you said though i i agree with you once you do it once you're gonna you're gonna get some feedback <laughs> <laughs> so it's not worth the risk right i right. think it's worth the risk yeah totally so, so i don't i think the answer to that is no we won't do that unless we could 100 percent prove that we would had conversations with these companies saying we're going to keep 100 percent transparent up to you if you want to go ahead and do that or not yeah cool um uh, you know one thing that's always interesting to me with you guys you guys are very active on social media you know we, we've been talking about this pretty much the whole time but how do you guys manage instagram snapchat YouTube, Facebook, like all the social medias. You guys are all over it. And, and I've just watched you guys grow with it. And you guys are crushing it. Well, luckily, um, the two main platforms that get most spam, I would say it will spam interaction <laughs> with the, uh, Instagram and YouTube. So that, they're the two ones we juggle between Snapchat and Twitter and uh, the uh, and, uh, what Facebook are kind of not as big. So it's not too bad staying on top of them. But I would say Instagram's the biggest one in terms of juggling the DMs, comments, posts, everything coming in left, right, and centre. People chasing up reviews, companies, and followers. Um, but yeah, if there was only one of us, I don't think we would last very long. I think the, yeah. the key factor here is having two of us. And if tough. we're working at different shift patterns, and you can pick up whilst I'm at work and vice versa. And take it in turns yeah. to do things. So there's, it's never a point on our page where not one of us is active on it for more than what five or six hours which is where we actually respect guys such as yourself fitness deal news Ultimate. i could not run this channel on my own no, no way it's nothing about yeah i and and that's i think why my instagram is so small it, it, it's just one i'm a little bit older so instagram in my brain is not really like top of my my food chain like youtube mm. is my, i love video and that's where my passion is so mm. I can't keep up. I don't have like a bunch of DMs and stuff. It's more just like consistently posting uh, hashtags, all these things that I'm like, I, I just can't. My brain doesn't, it can't work like that, I guess. Um, mm. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even have a Snapchat for the channel. 
Um, I can barely keep up with Snapchat in my personal life. So, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know how the other channels do it. I know some of them are like, no fate is, is pretty active all the time. Obviously FBN is very active all the time. I, I just don't know how they're doing it. And I mean, it's a lot, it's a lot. It is. It is very, very difficult. I think that's when you can tell that's passion that's driving it. Like we're, that money. we're all tempted to hire a third and a fourth person to get through the reviews as well. Yeah, but. <laughs> three, two, have a review, bros. Uh, and co. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well done to yourself for doing it all on your own. It's a credit. I could mm-hmm. really, really would struggle. It's It's tough. I tell you, like I said, it's it's like YouTube. You got to be consistent. Uh, you got to reply to comments and and be active. And Instagram, I feel like it's so it, there's so many more people on Instagram. It's so saturated that mm-hmm. trying to get your foot kind of get through the river there, it's difficult. It, it's pretty hard. Um, so mm-hmm. you know, on the other side here, I applaud what you guys do and and how much content you put out there because I think Thank again, you. more educational for and, and that's why you guys have the follow. People want to know. Um, I can say that about some other pages. That's why they have the following. Look, again, I have no problem with it. It's just they put out a lot of content. They have someone that helps them run the social media. And we always want, that's the thing with YouTube and Instagram I've learned is like people want more and more and more. more. Like, yeah. They want one review, they want another one. Like, immediately. Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty. And is, is what we do is we all bring so many different products to, to light and mm. uh, people can really just knock out like you know five videos while doing some cardio mm. yeah exactly some people binge watch our videos don't they yeah and i think a lot of people ask us to you, know, you just said to review other products all the time and mm. i think we'd have to if we was to go out and purchase all of these products we would have to be millionaires yeah Millionaires. Yeah. I'm <laughs> telling you right now, I do not have. I, I've, I've mentioned this to you guys before when we, I think early days of like how we're getting products and, and like reaching out to companies. And again, my Instagram abilities are just piss poor. So, like trying to keep up with all these different supplement companies that are on Instagram and, and reaching out to them, I've found for me personally, and look, I'm not made of money here. I don't make, I'm unemployed right now, let's be honest. Um, you know, I, I found it easier to just buy the products, unfortunately. Um, and it's like you guys said, you used to buy the products when you first started. And I think mm-hmm. I'm still kind of in that realm a little bit. Um, and, and I'm kind of okay with it because I've actually had, I don't know if you guys have had this, probably the same person if, if they did, but, um, someone commented once, uh, like, Hey man, like if you're getting the product for free and we've talked about this, like you might be a little bit more biased towards it like at least put things in a nicer way better tone mm. than you would if you bought the product and it was shit and you're literally saying this is a shit product mm. yeah it's difficult to it is i can understand where from a from a standpoint of someone watching those videos it would be difficult to to believe someone who has perhaps got sent the product for mm. but myself and craig we've been critical on ourselves you know we're still a hundred percent honest as if we bought it ourselves and in fact sometimes we're even more critical of it we're even more critical on the product because we know we've got to stay a hundred percent honest so i i I do understand where that point is coming from of course i do but i like to think that despite us getting sent all these products we still do stay as harsh as we need to be or as nice as we need to be you know I think that the majority of, of those companies willing to send out, the reason they're willing to send out is because in their hearts, they believe it's a good enough product to be reviewed. Yeah. I think it's those that, and I, I know we got slated for this, it's those who don't send product to review channels <laughs> that, you know, have that have something <laughs> perhaps to hide. And I'm not picking on any particular company there, but I think a positive review is worth, you know, $20, $30 to them. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned this, yeah. I, I mentioned this to you guys when all that was happening. Um, I don't know how much time it takes you guys. I've been doing this for over 15 years in the industry. It doesn't get any easier. It takes a long time to put these videos together. The research, the time to film it, the time to hit the gym to really collect your thoughts, come back in here, talk about the effects, graphics, all the editing. Like, look, I'm spending 
at least an hour, okay, at minimum on a video. Mm. And mm. you're sending me a product that, let's just say it costs 50 or $60. I mean, that's on the upward side of things. Mm. Um, giving the benefit of the doubt, like you, you paid me $60 to edit a video to give an honest feedback so that you, like it's online, like on YouTube. Mm. Literally, my, my number one video right now is Ghost Chips Ahoy. I bought that product. It has, I think, 10 or 12,000 views. Like, mm. if Ghost would just send me product, you're going to get, like, you're going to get, you know, uh, mm. some, some buys. People are going to come over and buy the product. Uh, mm. And so I do find it interesting when companies are like, eh, we're not, we're not doing that right now. And the one that comes to mind is VPN. I was really pretty disappointed to, to like, reach out to them. They're here local. And they're like, ah, we're not sending out samples right now. And, like, I get that there might be margins that you have to hit money, et cetera. But at the same time, like, look, I wish I could track the amount of like sales that companies generate from our reviews. I wish yeah. that was a metric. Yeah. We could start oh, it would be, it would be beyond, it would be sky higher. It'd be crazy. Um, and even the negative reviews, I think people still, it, it's, you know, I said this before, you know, good press, bad press, any press is good press. Mm -hmm. um so even if you're talking about a product that maybe is not so good but the price is great someone's gonna go buy it you know mm. like they still find value in that of course yeah of course. exactly there's even been really powerful illicit ones that we've said cool now too strong for us we wouldn't recommend it you know it, it, we didn't like it it was just too much people would go where can i get that from then <laughs> yeah. like, we're like, well it's a generally negative review but they're like, i don't care i like the way that sounds i'll have a bit of that mm. so like you said it, it it can go either way even if it is a negative review so why they don't send it out is is beyond me, and that's why perhaps I said that that comment on the Instagram that day. It's just it's because in our hearts we know how much we could generate for them. Mm. And the yeah. problem is, is that they don't realise that about half our following or viewers on YouTube are from the US. So some of these companies go, oh, you're UK based. I've got no, you know, my products don't reach overseas at your end of the world. So there's no point us having a, a UK review channel do it. But they don't realise that our, a lot of our viewers are based in the US and then it would aid their decision in purchasing it. You know, yeah. I think it's something you guys are at. I think a very good point where, like you said, there's companies reaching out to you, trying to send product. You guys have a huge backlog. It's, um, look, it's their loss in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not gonna, I made a joke with, uh, with Jerry over at Offerman because we just did a collab that's going live here in a couple of days. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, we should both just buy the Morphogen stuff and then we'll just see how we feel. Like, let's just give it an honest review. Like, look, I have no problem calling out a company when they're, when they're, it's this is all our opinion. What mm -hmm. we're doing right now is all of our opinion. I'm entitled to that. I'm not you know, being negative or, or saying anything bad. I just, I, I found that whole scenario fun, funny to watch. I'm sure it helped drive a bunch of traffic to their page. I'd never heard of Morphogen, to be honest, until then. Mm. So again, yeah. I found their products. Now they're all over, you know, Price Plow and they're talking and, and information about the product. So again, when you take a step back from all the drama and all the, the fun stuff, um, I think, the company is still getting good, you know, press and they're still getting mm. people to learn more about the company. And if, and if they don't want to send us products, at least there's some information out there and people can find it. Yeah. And it's, it's actually, it worked out all in the end because Ben sort of, you know, come out and said like, he basically uh, made peace with us. Yeah. So I do believe we will still one day get that. And um, even retailers and distributors send product to us. So we'll, we'll always get products one way or another. So and we'll always, we'll still even though despite that perhaps that scrap over Instagram we'd still give it an honest review. Mm. So um, I think we will do that one day. Yeah. 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 Just uh, it's just crazy how some things work. But like like exactly on the other foot, a lot of people came over to follow us that were Morphogen followers. Mm. So, like you said, any press is good press. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just funny how this whole thing's, and I don't know how long this has been going on. Uh, you know, it all kind of blew up on on their first supplement uh, summit, uh, their podcast style talk, uh, and I heard it, and I was like, "That's interesting." Um, and then it it just kind of transpired, I guess, over the last few weeks. But mm -hmm. um, like you said, it's any press is good press. I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of your followers, have gone over to Price Plow and and started following them. Like it's good 
that we're having the conversation and we're not all just zoned in on our own little like, mm. narrow minded way of thinking. Mm. Um, mm. It's, it's about understanding each other. And I mean, this is bigger than just supplement reviews, but, you know, we're, we're just all trying to understand each other and, and Definitely. bottom line, everyone's trying to make money. But um, I think we, like you said, it's uh, water under the bridge with, uh, with you guys, with them. And um, we're at peace. So, um, I don't know. It's it's exciting stuff. I mean, it definitely stirs the pot, and, and I think it generates a lot of a lot of talk. I mean, this is the reason why we're having this podcast right now for this type mm. of this chat. Mm. You know, it's definitely because going on. Yeah, the viewers and the consumers obviously still stay at the forefront of everything we're going to do. So yeah, like we said, we're not here to please supplement companies and retailers. We're here to please the consumer really, or, or do them a service, should I say? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's about testing the products. And giving our honest review, Definitely. our opinion. I mean, that's all it is. And and I just, oh, it's frustrating listening and, and watching some of these people that uh, they they just like look. It's oh, I'm entitled to my opinion. YouTube is a free space. Like I can mm. say what I think of any product. Like this mic sucks. Okay. Like <laughs> I, I don't know why that's a big problem for me to just say. Like it, it's just there's so much yeah. other things going on that like I, I just don't understand it. But yeah. We've been slated on our opinions, haven't we? Even recently, we did a seventh gear review by Axe and Sledge, and um, you know the troops all come in on the comment section. Oh, you've only just put this review out <laughs> and uh, said it's negative, it's a bad product because um, Axe and Sledge were in a podcast with so and so, and they said this. It's like no, this we is didn't just... even know about yeah, that we podcast didn't know. at the time. You're like, thanks. For it was actually know. thank you for letting us know because <laughs> we wouldn't have found out about yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't even a bad review. I think we. Still gave it like a like a five out of ten and said it was an okay product, but it was just mis uh, misadvertised really as a high stim when it wasn't really. It was third gear, wasn't it? Yeah, no, not no. not seven, but um, yeah. So people, like you say, people don't accept your opinion or or your experience of a product. It's like well, why are you watching the video then? You knew it was going to be experience based. Mm. Yeah, and it, it, it's something that we always say, and I just don't think it gets drilled into consumers' minds is that. Look, there's so many different factors that go into supplements. Like, there's so many outside, like, not even just, like, uh, genetics. I mean, there's so many different things. Oh, yeah. Sleep, how like, much the, coffee exactly. you drink, everything. The weather, Food, everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Diet. Food, you know, all those Food things can be, can, can change up the entire vibe of a pre-workout. Mm. 100%. Mm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. All right, then, Vince, I think, I think, uh... We're sort of ready to wrap it up unless you've got anything yeah. else like question wise. No, Perfect. I think well thank you for thank you for having us on really. Like it's been uh it's been really good. Obviously we I think we sim from sing from the same hymn sheet. I think we feel a lot of the same things and and I think we're touch wood, hopefully we'll both get to our hopefully. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. We really, really enjoy your reviews. I think they're very well put together. I actually need your editing skills a lot yeah. of the time. <laughs> very good graphics going on ours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to collab soon again on a on a product coming up at some point. Definitely, definitely. definitely. I'll, uh, I'll 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 look at your guys' list and look about forty products down, and then we can probably meet somewhere in the middle there. Yeah. Uh, we'll work something of out. the timing. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thanks guys for, for allowing me to come on here and, and talk with, you know, obviously your audience, both of our audiences are probably going to watch this and um, it was, uh, yeah. you know, a great honest talk and I'm glad we were able to have it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just got to hope these uh, subscribers roll in on this one, a couple of thousands. Yeah. 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 Hit that subscribe and bell and uh, smash that thumbs up button, please. <laughs>